So guys, in this video, we will try to understand the deep point two exercise question number one. So basically, we need to find which of the following are what inverse proportion. Okay. So first, we'll understand what is inverse proportion. I have already uploaded one video based on the difference between inverse and direct proportion. You can watch it. Okay. So I'll just explain it. Okay. The first part we'll take it. In the first part, it is given the number of workers on a job and the time to complete the job. Now, see, suppose I will take number of workers. Okay. So, number of workers I will take. Suppose 3. Time taken to do certain job, they are taking 5 hours. And suppose I am increasing the workers. Suppose I am taking 6 workers. Now, will the time decrease or increase? That is a question here. The time will get reduced. That means decreased. Suppose it is around 3 hours. It's just a calculation. Okay. It's around 3 hours. Now, observe here. The one quantity is increasing. I am increasing the workers. This quantity is getting what? Reduced. This is decreasing. And this quantity is increasing. Correct. So, one quantity is increasing, another quantity is decreasing. That means what? This is indirect, indirect proper. That means inverse proportion. Correct? So, first part will be what? Inverse proportion. Moving on to the second part, it is given time taken for a journey and the distance traveled in a uniform speed. So, time taken for a journey, it will be in direct proportion. Why? Because suppose I will take time and distance. And time, it is around 3 hours they can cover up to 12 kilometer okay if suppose the time is getting increased for us so the distance will increase or decrease distance will increase because in four hours they are they they can cover more kilometers so around i'll take 18 kilo 18 kilometers this is all assumed value okay this is not correct value i'm just giving an example time taken is increasing even the kilometers are increasing the, both the quantities are increasing that means what it is direct proportion so second will be direct proportion moving on to the third one area of cultivated land and the crop in harvested of course it will be direct proportion because area suppose in this area i am growing some certain crops okay now I'll harvest it that means I am cutting the crops I'll get the same amount whatever it was there that means it is directly proportional whatever if I increase the area of the land if I increase the area of the land the crops harvested will also increase correct so say the same logic moving on to the third one so second third one is what direct proportion fourth one time taken for a fixed journey and the speed of the vehicle now the thing here is that so we'll take some certain example time taken for fixed journey so if suppose time taken for fixed journey is three hours again the same example i'll take now the thing is that it is not the distance it is not the speed time taken for the fixed journey and speed of the vehicle so if speed increases suppose if the speed is 15 kilometer per hour suppose now 15 kilometer per hour in one hour it is traveling 15 kilometer so if i increase the speed suppose it is 20 kilometer per hour so will the time remain the same no the time will get reduced because i am going in a fast faster speed correct more speed speed is increased that means it will take less time to complete the fixed journey so it will take around i can say two hours okay if the time increases if the speed increases time will get reduced but in this case second part of the question it was the reverse if time is more it can travel more distance here the speed is more it can cover that distance certain fixed distance in lesser time so fourth part will be what inverse proportion okay so moving on to the last part of the question that is fifth part it is given 
the population of a country and the area of land per person it is the same logic so as soon as the population increases the area of the land per person will decrease so one quantity is increasing one quantity is decreasing therefore it is a inversely proportional so moving on to the second part of the question second question 13.2 so in a television game show the price money for of one lakh is to be divided equally amongst the winners complete the following table so we need to complete the following table and we have to verify whether it is directly proportional or inversely proportional now thing here is that so let us try to analyze the table first so it is given number of winners correct number of winners it is given and the price for each winner it, it is also given okay so price for each winner it is also given so it is given for number of winners is one it they will give one lakh then if it is two then it is fifty thousand and four we don't know five like this the table is given you can see on the screen also so fine so let us see how to do the how to proceed suppose if i denote this as a b the unknown quantities okay now this is in direct or inverse first you have to test the two quantities are given from this also we can test the whether it is direct or inverse correct see in inverse proportion it is x1 into y1 is equal to x2 into y2 correct x1 will be x1 x2 will be the same quantities that means here number of winners will take and y1 y2 will be price for each winner so it is nothing but 1 into 1 lakh is equal to 2 into 50,000 if they are equal LH is equal to RHS then it is indirectly proportional that means inverse proportion so you can see it is nothing but 1 lakh 50,000 into 2 is what again 1 lakh so RHS LH is equal to RHS therefore it is inversely proportional okay now if you want to test for the direct proportion also I'll just show you in direct proportion what is the case x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 correct now what do you have to do x1 what is x1 here 1 1 by 1 lakh is equal to 2 by 50,000 now from here I can say that what I can say that 50,000 into 1 is equal to 2 lakh no right see here I will just cross multiply so I will just write it over here cross multiply I will get 50,000 is equal to 2 into 1 lakh that is 2 lakh itself they are not equal therefore I can say that it is not directly proportional it is inverse proportion okay so let us proceed further so we will calculate it is we got to know that it is inversely proportional the so same logic you can apply so i'll take these two quantities so 2 into 50,000 is equal to 4 into a so from this i have to take a so 4 gets divided so a is equal to 2 into 50,000 is what 1 lakh so 1 lakh divided by 4 what will be my answer it is nothing but 25,000 so this much rupees I have to okay this is will be here now moving further for the second calculation so again you can take the same thing that is 2 into 50,000 5 into B correct now B is equal to what 2 into 50,000 is 1 lakh divided by 5 okay so it's divided by 5 so that will give me the answer as 20,000 so like that you can calculate for all the things okay so it's just dividing the given so whatever is there suppose next one is 8 so 1 lakh divided by 8 again next one 10 by 10 1 lakh divided by 10 then again for 20 1, 1 lakh divided by 20 that's it moving on to the third question so Rahman is making a wheel using spokes he wants to fix equal spokes in a such a way that the angles between any pair of consecutive consecutive spokes are equal help him by completing the following table so table is given in the you can see on the screen also so
so i'll just draw it so number of spokes they have given now the thing is that the angle between so i'll just write the angle okay so it's nothing but what angle between the consecutive or we can say the pair of consecutive spokes now it is given 4 and 90 degree 6 and 60 degree 8 then 10 then we have 12 also okay so we need to find all these unknown quantities now the thing here is that whether it is so we have given certain three parts of the questions are the number of spokes and the angle formed between in inverse proportion or not it's a simple question see over here you can directly say the number of spokes are increasing four to six but the degrees angle is decreasing one quantity is increasing other quantity is decreasing it is obviously it is obvious that it is inversely proportional that inverse proportion okay or you can just give the statement or you can use the formula itself it is 4 into 90 whether it is equal to 6 into 60 360 equal to 360 correct so therefore it is inverse proportion now calculate the angle between the slopes for the 15 spokes we need to calculate for the 15 spokes also so okay so let us move on further for the second part of the question we have to calculate the angle between the pair of consecutive spokes on which 15 spokes so for which what will i do the first thing is that i have to just complete the table so i'll just finish off the table first okay now it is given 6 by 60 so 6 into 60 this quantity i'll take equal to 8 into i'll take this as some a okay so from which a is equal to 6 into 60 divided by 8 so i'll get the value as 45 degree again again the same thing 6 into 60 is equal to 10 into a so that implies a is equal to 360 by 10 which is equal to 36 degree and 6 into 60 is equal to 12 into a so 360 divided by 12 equal to a that means it is 30 degree so i i it's it's you can replace this a as here b okay so same quantity you should not take this as c these are the unknown quantities you can take any of the variables okay just you are mentioned you just you have to mention it okay so this is nothing but c so we got for 12 it is 30 for 10 it is 36 for a like for 8 is it is 45 degrees so i have written all the found out values here okay so next going further for the second part of the question so it is given we need to calculate if the number of spokes is we have to calculate the angle if the number of spokes is 15 so 15 for 15 we need to calculate the angle okay that is a question so i'll take again 4 into 90 or i can take i can take 66 into any of the things i can take 6 into 60 is equal to 15 into i can take unknown quantity x x is something but the angle between the consecutive pair of consecutive spokes so from this x is equal to 360 divided by 15 so what will be my answer it will be 24 degrees fine going on to the third part of the question so it is given now the angle between the two consecutive spokes is given 40 degree that means here angle is given as 40 degree we need to calculate the spokes okay so it is given so again the same thing 6 into 60 equal to i can take y into 40 degrees okay so from this y is equal to 360 divided by 40 which is equal to 9 spokes it is angle here it is spokes so moving further for the fourth question and so so if a box of sweets is divided among 24 children they will get five sweets each how many would get how many would each get if the number of children is decreased by four so 
first thing you have to remember is that first step is to draw the table in order to understand in order to analyze the question okay so first thing it is given number of children correct number of children and what else is given number of sweets correct now so number of children it is given as 24 and the sweets for them so i have to just draw it there so it's better to draw in other way or it's fine okay so number of sweets will be five so they have said that number of children is decreased by four so 24 minus 4 it is which is equal to 20 okay correct now what will be the number of sweets the children will be getting that is the question here so it is again inverse proportion why because if the number of children are increasing the sweets which will be getting each 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 child will be getting will be reduced so it is nothing but ip inverse proportion so again the same thing x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2 so here x1 is 24 into y1 will be what 5 and x2 is 20 y2 we need to find so i'll take it as y2 itself y2 is nothing but number of sweets each child will be getting so 24 into 5 divided by 20 is equal to y2 so y2 is nothing but 6 so you can see that 24 to 28 is decreasing number of children are decreasing but number of sweets that each student or the child will get is increasing therefore one quantity is increasing one quantity is decreasing so we can say that it is inverse proportion moving further for the fifth question a farmer has enough food to feed 20 animals in his cattle for six days how long would the food last if there were 10 more animals in his cattle so first thing we need to draw the table so number of animals so the number of animals and number of days so number of animals it is 20 number of days for them that the food okay it is six days so farmer has enough food to feed 20 animals for six days so how long the food will last that means number of days you need to find if if the number of animals is increased or where 10 more that means 20 plus 10 that is 30 so this logic you need to understand okay that's why we have to draw the table so in order to understand in a better way so now here animals is increasing the, the number of days that the food will last will decrease correct here it is increasing here it will decrease therefore it is inverse proportion now x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2 so this will be i can take it as y2 now x1 is what 20 into 6 is equal to 30 into y2 20 into 6 is 120 by 30 is equal to y2 that implies y2 is equal to 4 correct therefore we can see that here it is increasing that means 20 is increased to 30 6 is getting reduced to 4 therefore it is inverse proportion